Father God, we just want to thank you for that, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your infinite wisdom, Lord. Lord, you know all that you see all, Lord. And you know exactly what we need on this day, Lord. So prepare our hearts, minds, and souls for what thus said the Lord on this day, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Let your word, Lord, let your word hit the spot on today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Let your word fall on fertile ground on this day, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord. And Lord, let us receive it on this day, Lord, and apply it to our daily lives, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Father God, we thank you. Let us be, let it be a testimony, Lord, on today, Lord, of your goodness, Lord. You've been so good to us, Lord, better than we've been to ourselves, Lord. And for that alone, we thank you, Lord. So, Lord, we shall hallelujah. We shall hallelujah to your name, Lord, as we rejoice, Lord. We rejoice in the things of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord.
worked it out with God through Jesus. Amen? We can have a
Good morning. Welcome to Living Grace Church. For our members, for our first-time visitors, for folks who have come back or traveled far, welcome to Living Grace. Amen. Home for 
for the holidays, Jakari's home for the holidays. Hey, Jakari. Amen. Well, um, we are glad that you're here. We are a church that does not have perfect people. Amen. We have a perfect God. Amen. Amen. We serve a perfect God. No perfect people here. Amen. Just people that love the Lord and um, trying to be on this journey together. Amen. Trying to hold each other up and help each other and um, keep our focus on Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. So let me see what's going on this week. Um, no Bible study this Wednesday. Amen. So no Bible study this Wednesday. Um, just make a note of that. Women's Christmas dinner is coming up on next Saturday night at 5.30 for appetizers, 6 o'clock here. Um, women's Christmas dinner is already coming up. So, Pastor, did you get enough men to volunteer to help serve? Sort of, kind of. All right. So, see Pastor men if you're really immediately, after immediately after service if you can come and help um, serve. And um, are we still looking for hosts for Mount Stream Air Force Base? Uh, I think the deadline is already come and gone. Okay. And we had a couple people that uh, volunteered and I sent their names in. Okay. So if you volunteered to host somebody from Mount Stream Air Force Base, thank you for, for that for Thanksgiving dinner. And um, we'll, we'll be in touch or somebody will be in touch with you to um, make the arrangements for that. Amen? All right. So today is going to be, um, well, first of all, with the birthdays and anniversaries, right? Birthdays? Any birthdays this week? Oh, wow. We have a birthday. Any other birthdays? Oh, Bill and Jerry, grandson. Hey, man. Opportunity 
to share what he's saying to you. Amen. And so we're going to have times when people are coming up to give their testimony. And in between those times when people aren't giving testimony, the praise team has songs to encourage us and, and point us towards heaven. Amen. And after all that is done, then I get five or ten minutes again in the, in the service. But the longer you speak, the shorter I speak. So I don't know if that's good or bad. But I got 15 pages and I got five pages, so it depends on what y'all do. So before we get into the praises, the testimonies, and the music, what we generally do here is we give a time for everybody to just get up and love each other and greet each other. And what we do during that time is we also have our offering. And so uh, the deacons are getting in place right now to take up the offering. But while you're able to praise the Lord through your giving, also get up and say hello to somebody, shake a hand, give a hug, whatever the Lord lays on your heart to do. Amen? Amen. 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 So let's look. Amen.
shouting and having a good time with the Lord, that you just have to go home and take a nap. I remember one time I preached, and I drove two blocks and had to pull over and take a nap for about 30 minutes because the, the Spirit just did what the Spirit does, just used me, and I, and I just hope that that's what happened to you today, that you're in this place and you just let go of it all. You know, and, and talking about testimonies, I'll kind of start crying with pump a little bit. I think I don't really think about crying with pump before. Yeah. But I was thinking this morning when we were having new members class, sometimes we forget what God has done. We were sharing with our new member, Paul, this morning. Amen? I'm sorry. I'm reading Paul right here. So forgive me. Philip Paul, see? I'm not crazy. Anyway. <laughs> but anyway, we were talking this morning, and we started talking about how when we started living Grace Church, and we were talking about how we, we started off with a group of people that just came to pray one Sunday. And then we met down in our basement, and people were down there, and they're sitting on chairs, and they're sitting on the couch and the floor and all over the place, and we're in our basement. And I thought they were coming to just to pray, but they came for a word. And so I had to preach. And so they said, we'll be back next Sunday. So to, maybe to try and solve some issues, we said we're going to rent some chairs. And so we called out to the base to see what we could do about renting chairs. And they said, well, we can rent you the number of chairs that you need, but you can only have them for 30 days. And at the end of 30 days, you're going to have to pick up all these chairs and take them all the way back out to the base. And so we were like, man, that's a whole lot of work to do to get these chairs. They said, well, we need the chairs. And when you know it, God already had a plan worked out. Because at the end of that 30 days, when we're packing up all those chairs and we're taking them up the stairs and loading them in our cars and in our trucks to take them back to base, by the end of the time that we took the chairs out to the base, we had a new location. We didn't need their chairs. We didn't think they were anything in the saying, you know, I've already got this worked out. He, he orders our steps, and sometimes when we're walking along the path, we don't see exactly what he's, he's trying to do to us because he said he's a lamp unto our feet. He's not shining his light all the way down because if we knew what was coming all the way down. Sometimes we might run back the other way, but he's just shining the light. And I was just thinking about that all through the, the, the journey of us becoming living grace. I saw, I see now how he was doing things. As a matter of fact, the first night we came here, I had someone walk up to me, we were praying, we were walking through the building and we were praying, and I had some, somebody come up to me and said, Pastor, I, I don't know what this means, but the Lord just told me you're going to pastor this church. <laughs> and I looked at him and said, Brother, I'm, I'm already, no, he said, no, you're going to pastor one church in this building. You're going to be the pastor here. You know, and I said, Amen. But in my mind, I'm not really seeing it, and now where we're at today. Hmm. God was doing yeah. something that I had no idea of what he was doing. That's six years ago. And I forget about that sometimes. I forget that God is working things out. Yes. He's got a purpose and he's got a plan. <laughs> and so right now I'm going to offer the microphone to anybody who has a testimony, who wants to talk about what God has done in their life because there are no small testimonies because amen. we do not serve a small God. Amen. 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 So if any, amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. So if anybody doesn't know who I am, my name is Mata, and uh, for anybody who was here like last year and I wasn't here, um, I put it on Facebook, for anybody who didn't see it, I would have to say that I was wrong, please forgive me. So when you need to be kind of old like me or have done things that I've done, your brain doesn't work so good, you have to write these things down. So I just want to give my testimony and give glory to God, and hopefully Amen. if it does help somebody, uh, that's, that's even better, but um, feel free if there's anything that you personally want to come and ask me about, I am not shy. So um, I've read uh, 
this week, even just getting ready for this, uh, this man says that when you give your testimony, what you should do is you say uh, what you were before you met Jesus, uh, what you are, uh, the details of your salvation, and what you are now. Um, you put your uh, faith in Christ and submit to his lordship as Savior. That's, that's, that's not a hard thing to do. Um, our Heavenly Father created everything in this world, so it makes sense that he knows better than we do ourselves what we need to do and, and just put your faith and hope and trust and believe in him. So, um, you know, I could, I could fill up the whole time just because I'm that old. <laughs> um, so my father died Christmas Eve before I was due in May. So Christmas was always really hard for my family. Um, both my mother and my stepdad uh, were uh, alcoholics, so I was raised in a, uh, a violent, abusive home. We did go to church some. This is for people that think going to church is what you need, but um, we would uh, recite the Apostles' Creed. Uh, that's, um, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heavens for earth, and in His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. So I would say those words. I was in the church, but, um, you know, that, that doesn't, that, that's not what you need. You need more than that. So, um, in junior high, I remember we went to, uh, I was in band, and we had to, in March of we went to Canyon City, Colorado. And this is how good Lord uh, pursues you, even when you don't know what's going on. We were put on hold in this, um, it was like a covered picnic area, because there was a prison break. <clears throat> and um, the, there was other people there that must have been there on a mission group. And they were going through and talking to people and uh, telling them about Jesus. And I don't remember much about what this person said, but this person says, can I pray for you? Mm. You know, I, I had nothing against that. I, I believe in God, so yeah, so they prayed for me. Um, uh, later, uh, oh, later, that was about the same time that Jesus Christ Superstar came out. It was a Broadway play. Uh, they sang songs kind of following the gospel. A lot of people don't think it's good, but I think the good Lord can use everything and anything for his purpose. And when they had the part where um, Jesus was being beaten within an inch of his life, um, <clears throat> that was very, very saddening. And, and just, you know, I remember how sickening that was. So there was a teeny, weeny little seed that somebody had put in me. I'm sure my grandparents prayed for me, that other person prayed for me. Um, you know, good Lord knows your heart, which is good. <clears throat> so the little tiny seeds are growing, but at the same time, we have the wheat, which is good, and we have the tares, which are actually poison. And so um, grief and depression was uh, was growing along with that, and um, I was just tired. It seemed like I was doing good and trying to do good, and nothing ever came out. <clears throat> so my parents moved me for my senior year to Great Falls, Montana, so that was a real bummer. <clears throat> but I came to Grace Baptist, and there was Pastor Swanberg, mm -hmm. and he says, if you are tired, this is just what I just got done saying, he says, if you are tired trying to do uh, being good and nothing works out right, he said, give yourself to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So what, what he would do is he would say, um, after he made his uh, uh, talk, and he'd say, everybody by your head, if anybody, um, you know, was tired and, you know, so I raised my hand, I was definitely tired. And he said, so we can pray for you. So they prayed for the people to raise their hands. And then he said, um, if anybody would like to accept Jesus as your savior, come forward. So I believe that the prayers actually helped me to move forward. So I went, and we thought, went forward and they had to say a little prayer that is, um, uh, I believe in Jesus, I believe I need a savior in the first place. And I believe he died on the cross and rose for my sin. And then you go to a believer's class, and then you get baptized. And the most important thing about getting baptized is that it's your one of your first public displays of um, your commitment to God. But it is also a demonstration that you are literally uh, buried in the water. Your old, all your old has been buried and dead and is gone. <clears throat> So um, I, that was my senior year, and so uh, then my people tell me, um, you have to go to 
college, never thought that the only thing I ever wanted when I was a kid was to have a family of my own. <clears throat> so they said you can go to a university and you can be a teacher or a nurse, where that came from, I don't know, because I was tested high in mechanics. So I go to MSU and uh, <clears throat> I wasn't I wasn't strong enough to be sent off on my own. I didn't uh, I didn't know anything really about general life. Um, and um, and uh, through him, God showed me uh, unconditional love, forgiveness, mercy, grace, healing, peace. Um, oh, and then I had, uh, I want to tell you about that I had cancer um, when I was 28. <clears throat> and I was going to a Baptist church at that time. I, you know, Baptists usually stick really close to the Bible. So they said, well, come on over, we're going to uh, anoint your head with oil, and then all the... Um, Elders lay their hand on top of you. This is what you do when you're sick, and they pray for your healing. So when I went in to um, <clears throat> have the cancer removed, the pathologist said he had never heard of such a small amount of cancer causing a secondary that would, you know, warn you. So I believe that the prayers were actually shrinking that cancer, and Amen. the healing might take a while, but it, the beginning had, had started. So, and another time was when I, I had the shoulder, uh, I was out with uh, Scott Urquhart, was here. I was out with his uh, sister, and she was going to spray her uh, horses with mosquito stuff and didn't let the horse know about it, and I'm going around for rains, and something in my head said to me, you don't ever wrap the reins of a horse around your hand. So I let go of the reins a little bit, and she sprayed that horse, but that horse immediately went from here to there and just about ripped my arm out with it. So I had this pain that was just constant, and uh, I was a nurse today, so I was always picking up people. So I asked the pastor at that church, and I was in uh, Wilson, Kansas, and I said, you gotta, you gotta pray for my uh, shoulder. And so he just did up in front, everybody, anybody here have a, uh, a something you need prayed out, just put your hand on it and you pray for it. And uh, there was warmth and healing, and, Never bothered me since. Mm -hmm. So, so healing is real. Our Amen. God is real. Amen. His mercy, grace, and peace is real. Amen. Um, the God is good all the time. Uh, we might have. It might have been less painful for me if I would have claimed to God. But you know, like I said in Sunday school this morning, I'm really slow at learning. So, um, um, so I began seriously and religiously praying and reading my Bible. So that's. Basically, what I do all day is uh, I listen to the pastors on the radio. I pray in the morning. I tell people if I could begin with my Bible in the morning, I wouldn't even want to get up in the morning. <clears throat> so always make time for God. Even if it's, this is, he's so amazing because you don't have to go to a place. You don't have to do a thing. Once you have his spirit in you, he's with you all day long. So all through the day, you talk to him, ask him for help, help me with this, forgive me of that. Um, and his, uh, so make time for God and his word and don't lean on your own understanding, whatever you do. Uh, a lot of times the teenagers think when they're 16, I have arrived, I know it all, I did. <clears throat> and that's so far from the truth. But you lean on every word, every word in God's Bible. We are all in there, all of our stories are in there. Hmm. He has, um, the Bible doesn't just tell the good parts of the story. It tells the bad parts of the story too, so you know that you're you're in there and, and God still loves you through it all. Amen. Um, I thank thankful for God pursuing me, finding me, teaching me to love him and not give me up on me. Amen. Um, you might have to live and work in this fallen world, but for now and for eternity, fill your heart, your mind, your home, your family with God. He has for you and is in Jesus. Is the only thing that will last forever. There is nothing else that we're taking on to eternity except our love that God has for us and the love that we show to others. <clears throat> he not only He's not only the way to live, but the only sane way to live. Amen. And in just a few more words, I'm going to talk about that. Since growing up, some people might not understand it. We all have the other temple. And that went up to heaven. That was that was the prayer. So that's yes.
morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. Pastor and Sister Murphy, and all of y'all out there, I love you. And I love this church. Amen. And as shy as I am, uh, don't want to be, I'm going to give this testimony. Amen. Testify. <clears throat> and I do hope it will be very strengthening and encouraging to us all. Or oh, y'all all. When I lived on Fairfield Bench, we had a nice piece of land, and somehow I got to talking to a guy. He had some cattle. He wanted to run on this land. And I said, sure. He let out a bunch of cattle, and as time went on, I uh, got to thinking, this man has not come around to pay me. And I guess a few days after I was thinking about that, our driveway was like a quarter mile long, and I looked, and there come uh, some cowboys riding on horses, and the trailers and all that coming, and he goes up to the gate where the cattle were out in the field, and gonna open the gate without saying anything to me. And I don't believe in getting loud and fussing and showing anger and all that. I just, when I was in the world, just do what I had to do, you know. And I walked up to him, I said, what are you doing? He said, I came to get my cattle. I said, that was not our agreement. <clears throat> so I called my, I told my wife, I said, call the sheriff. She called the sheriff, and he wrote out a check real quick. I said, honey, take this up to the bank right quick, because I don't know how much rubbish in it. And uh, <laughs> thank you for catching that. <laughs> she rushed up to the bank with the check. And this man was, he and I were just holding a conversation. And all of a sudden, he looked at me. He said, what's wrong? What's the matter? And I didn't know what he was talking about. I looked at him and very quickly I left him and I was rushing to the house, but I couldn't run. I was walking as fast as I could, but I felt something was holding me back. And I got into the cabin and I fell on my knees. I said, Lord, Forgive me. I do believe I repented. I said, Lord, have mercy on me. What the man didn't know is he saw death in my face. I didn't know it. I was having a massive heart attack. <clears throat> we got to the hospital. And they, what they, they, they said they put that thing in your leg and it, goes up and it shows your heart. I thought the guy was going to run a wire up my leg and then an hour or two later I could see it on the screen. But he put that, he said, it's going to be a little twitch. He was worse than a twitch, boy. <laughs> and, then I way up and I could see my heart on the screen. And the man, the doctor, he dropped everything and he walked out. He's holding his head. He said, my God, says, it's not possible this man is alive. It is not possible. He's a heart specialist. It is not possible this man can be breathing. He could walk, doing anything. <coughs> artery was totally blocked. This artery was 95% blocked. This artery was completely blocked. The whole right side of my heart was not working at all. And I had been experiencing what I thought was just asthma attacks because I used to work underground coal mine, which I really loved and enjoyed, but I had to let it go. <coughs> but he said, I don't understand how this man can be alive. But I remember, and I didn't hesitate at all to try to figure out or guess what it was. I prayed, Pastor Murphy, for the Lord to put his love in my heart. 
Put his kindness in my heart. Put his goodness in my heart. Put compassion in my heart. Put his spirit in my heart. That's why all of those several years I could be safe to say I was experiencing this. It wasn't anything Brother Shannon had done. You didn't see anything about Brother Shannon in this testimony. All you can see is the hand of God. Amen. The power of God. Amen. The answers to prayer. Amen. Mm. Yeah. After I prayed, I couldn't get up from prayer because I knew I was in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And when I did get up, nothing else that I was so involved in mattered. It Amen. just didn't matter. I didn't care about the fourteen or sixteen hundred dollars he owed us or nothing. Amen. All I wanted to know was what was going on. Yes. I had been having heart attacks. What about twelve or fourteen heart attacks? And all through the several years I was experiencing this, the Lord Jesus held my heart. Yes. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, whatever you do, love him. Yes. Hug him. I was yes. thinking one day I just came up with, God, if I can hug you, I'll hug you. <laughs> God, I can do it. You have it so, so. 
joy of the Lord is our strength. We're not to walk around defeated our whole lives, sad and depressed because of circumstances. Life's going to go like this. We're going to have good days. We're going to have bad days. Right. We're going to have things come our way that we can't handle. But we weren't equipped to handle it. But our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was. Yeah. He is equipped to handle it. He yeah. bears the cross. He carried the shame. Yeah. He carried our sins on his back. He was beaten by our transgressions. Yeah. He was wounded for our iniquities. The chastisement of our was upon him. We were healed because of his strength. We were saved because of the strength that he gave. Amen. God is good. So I have a friend that I've known 
since grade school, and um, she's had a really, really rough life. <coughs> and when Don and I moved back about five years ago to Montana, the Lord put it on my heart to just spend time with her, to, to love her like Jesus would love her. Um, when we were in grade school, she had an accident, an attack, and she was really, really harmed in that. She's had probably 40 to 50 surgeries since that time to kind of deal with the damage from that. And um, she's on a lot of chronic pain medicine because she has chronic pain because of that. She's also bipolar, so you know, whether she's high or she's low, it's very intense. Um, but we would go for walks together and I would listen to her as she would um, talk about different difficulties and injustices that she had dealt with in life. And I would just listen to her and I would pray with her and I would pray for her. And I just did my best to speak truth and life into her circumstances, the best that I knew how. Um, in my heart, I just wanted to love her, Jesus. So I just, I prayed and prayed for her. And I prayed that the Lord would rescue her because she's really, really suffering with everything that she was going through. But about a year ago, I started to give up. Um, I was discouraged because I didn't see that I was making any difference in her life. And um, at one point she said to me, you know, I understand if I'm too much for you. I've had a lot of people walk away from me in my life because she's pretty intense. Um, anyway, so I responded to her and I told her that I loved her dearly. But, and I hated to see her struggle with things because she's so angry at so many things. I told her that I wanted so desperately for her to know the peace of God and for it to flow over all of her trauma, her hurts, her memories, and her to just be free from those things. And um, we were messing up. We were messing up. So I took my time before I, I wrote these things out to her. But I... I told her that to me, sometimes her rage can seem like just a deluge of hundreds of thousands of gallons of water just pouring over this gigantic waterfall. <coughs> and then I felt like I was standing there with this little packet of sugar saying, you know, Jesus is the sweetest thing I know, but I was just like drowned out by her rage sometimes. And it wasn't directed at me, it was just at life in general, and I was the one that happened to be listening to her. So. Um, she received what I had to say with grace, but we didn't spend as much time together after that. We would still message, but our walks ended, and I, I felt like a failure. <coughs> then, about six months ago, um, she sent me a message on Facebook, and she told me that she found a church and a family, and she asked me if I would come to church with her on a Saturday night one time. She said, I'm not trying to recruit you away from your church. I know you love living grace, but... So I went, and right away, um, I knew I knew something was different, and it was just amazing. Um, she wanted to get there half an hour early so she could pray with people for the church service, and the entire time we were there, she was just gushing about how people had loved her, and prayed with her, and taken care of her, and answered her questions, and so I wept almost the entire time that I was there that evening, because... It was everything that I prayed for and more. It was so beautiful. Um, she told me that she knew there was a life after this life, that she was going to heaven. And also, she's on a lot of medications for, for bipolar and for pain, and just a lot, a lot of medicines. And she told me that she had weaned herself down to about half of the dosages that she was on, which is just evidence of healing, just just incredible. So then fast forward to about a week ago on Facebook, she posted that um, one of her dogs was lost. Someone had accidentally let her dogs out of the yard and she was able to get three of them back, but she couldn't find one of them, the princess. And um, my friend has never been able to have children in part due to the attack when she was a child. And so these dogs were like her family, these huskies. And I convinced Don to go for a walk with me Saturday night last week which was a miracle that he said yes <laughs> to walk with me. And uh, we're walking along, and I'm just praying, like, I just wanted God to bring her baby home, you know? And as we're walking, Don noticed on the side of the road, there were some rather large dog prints and then some deer tracks. And so we were talking about how probably the princess was chasing a deer, you know, she just kept on going. And um, so my friend lives kind of in the same neighborhood that I do. 
and we're walking down Wilkinson Lane, which runs parallel to the highway, and I'm just praying, like, Lord, bring this baby home to her mama, and um, at any moment, I just expected Princess to come bounding out of the trees, and we would, you know, facilitate a happy reunion, and I looked up next to the highway, on the side of the highway, and there was a dead deer, and I thought, oh, you know, that must have been the deer that Princess was chasing, and then just a little bit further from her was, um, there was a small animal, it was too small to be a deer, and as I got closer to it, I realized it was a husky, and I didn't want that to be my friend's dog, and I didn't know what to do, panic kind of set in, and I was messaging people to try to figure out what to do, because I didn't want to be the one to call her, and I didn't want her to come and see this animal that might not be hers, and I didn't want to further traumatize her, so I was able to get a hold of her mama, and she said that she would take care of it. So for the next couple of hours, I just prayed, and just prayed um, that the Lord would cover her with his comfort and his peace. Um, I didn't want to have that phone call with her, in part because I'd had other phone calls with her in the past where she had lost a friend or lost a pet, and she'd just been inconsolable and just distraught and at times suicidal. And I didn't, I just confessed that I didn't know how to respond to those phone calls. And in those phone calls, I would just be praying that the Lord would comfort her, just wrap her in comfort. So I didn't want another one of those phone calls. And when I went home, I was just pleading with the Lord to cover her with peace, to hold on to her, to comfort her. And um, I was just pleading with him, you know. And at one point, oh, and so I was saying, God, like, don't let this be the thing that the enemy uses to take her away from you. Because at times in the past, she said, why would God take my friend from you? Why would God take my pet? And I didn't have a good answer for that, you know? So at one point in my prayers, the Lord said to me, Barbara, I'm the one who's begun a good work, a good work in her, and I'll be the one to complete it. Amen. So, so, Amen. just, he's so good. Yeah. So maybe about an hour after that, my phone lit up and it was her name on the screen and I didn't want to answer it because I was, I felt like I was not prepared. And anyway, his son said, hello, and she's in the bar and she said, it was Princess. And I'm just bawling, you know? And I said, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And she said, no, and she said, thank you so much for what you did. It was perfect. She said, my mom was with me and I didn't have to do it alone, and she said, I don't have to worry anymore about my baby, and I'm a blubbering mess, and she's praising God, you know, it's just, and that's the goodness of God, you know, I said, are you going to church tonight, because this was Saturday, and she goes on Saturday nights, and she said, yeah, I need to be there, so I went, and there was there was hugging and there was weeping, but there was a peace over my hand that I had never seen in my life before. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's unbelievable. After the service, I went up to talk to the pastor's wife, and I just thanked her for loving my friend well. Um, I told her that there was a point in time where I had kind of given up, but that the Lord had used their church to just love my friend, to pray for her, to answer all of her questions to support her and to pour into her. So I'm super grateful for that. And um, I just, so my testimony is just the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God, even when we might feel like giving up. And if you're like myself, struggle with anxiety or depression, or my friend that's bipolar, um, I just want to encourage you today that the Lord sees you. Yeah. And he loves you. Yeah. And he, it's his will to cover you with his grace and peace. Uh, how's everybody doing? Bless. Bless. Um, the only person I told was Barb this morning that um, my mother basically told me that it was like testimony on you know, Sunday, and plus I felt like. I basically told her I didn't have like anything like hair, honestly, but it felt like me being up here is like it's almost like the force of God was like 
to kind of like tell me that like I have something to Amen. like deliver. I just have to look at it. So um, it started like at last one where my mother has like um, a medical issue that was like going on with her. I think it was either like it was either like Monday or Tuesday. I can't remember which one, but it has to be sometime around that day. And when I got a call from my uncle that um, she was in the hospital, I. Um, Part of me tried to like try to stay strong about it, while the other part of me just like had that like fear about it, you know. And it's it's not uh, to me it's, it wasn't that good because it's either like you know one side against the other, and I should have been like stand strong to think there, but the part of me was like afraid. Because, like, my mother was, like, <coughs> in the hospital, and I was, like, I took a day off from my job, I told my boss about it, and, um, I just had to, like, stay calm and open mind about it, and basically, and basically, I, as while I was taking a day off from my job, I tried to, like, stay calm in everything, and try to get, like, um, come up and such. I took my time to myself and look over some like few verses I save on like my photo album, which what I often do is like I have like this Bible verse app, which I often go to. I find me a verse that's like speaks the meaning, save it, and plus oftentimes I will look back on to to that the, the Bible verse I save and it's just helping myself to remember to remember myself and and one that verse I look back on was for God has not given us the spirit of fear yes. but of power and of love and of sound and power. Yes. 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 Something that I should have had um, back then because like half of me was like still trying to hold strong but the other part of me was like all had like this angst worry and such and it, it was like I was told before like how fear can like cloud a person's mind and such because that's basically what like the devil can do to yeah, like, say right, yeah. it can cloud yeah. our minds and knows our weakness yeah. it's like thing is we have to warn the thing is that I have to warn about that day was like Stay whole yeah. to my faith. Yeah. 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 How bad? Yeah. Because um, one of the things I've learned here says, "Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, He yeah. is He that yeah. doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee." Yeah. So yeah. basically. Though this testimony is short, basically the meaning of this message I'm trying to give out is like, no matter, um, days are basically at random, you never know what next next day, tomorrow is about to bring, you know, whether it's like, I won't, des I won't describe what it is, it may basically, it may get into like, some like car accident or someone you know is in trouble or something, but Basically, whatever day comes, you just have to like learn to keep you keep your faith whole and strong on that day coming.
Amen. 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 to design yes Jesus loved me for the Bible tells me so and now I realize how powerful that Amen. statement is because Amen. Jesus loves me regardless right. of who I am or what I do he never stops loving me that's right that's right and because Jesus loved me I know that Satan has no authority in my yes. life
Some of you knew about, well, I guess it's been 12 years or so. Um, I was 32 years old, newly married, and my dad had just passed away not long before. And the next year, I found out I had an eye condition that took my sight. So for the last 12 years, I have been blind, and in the meantime, I have gone back to school. I've got my degree. I've had my family. Even though I can see everything that God had for me to see, He closed my eyes so that He could open them yes. in a different way. That I would never just go. And in March of this year, God gave me my sight.
you're here and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, just raise your hand. Is there one? Is there one? Maybe there's somebody here who wants to rededicate their life. Is there anybody here who wants to rededicate their life today? Is there one? Is there anybody here that wants to make Living Grace Church their church home? Is there one? Amen. I see those hands. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Peace to God. Good Lord.